This is Father Olivier Marie, a Catholic priest who has been brutally murdered just a few days ago in France. He was allegedly beaten to death by a so-called refugee who he had welcomed into his community. What's more, the suspect had already been arrested and subsequently released on bail for setting fire to a cathedral in the same area of southwest France. When released on bail, the priest took him in, offering him room and board. The suspect from Rwanda was due to go on trial for the arson attack on the church, which took place in July last year. But while on bail, this man was free to travel around Europe. It's an incredible situation. So let's start from the beginning. This man is from Rwanda. There is no war there at present. In fact, it appears to be rebuilding itself. So what exactly are the grounds for asylum in Europe? Can anyone come here from a developing country? Well, the answer to this seems to be yes. Does a country need to be at war or engaged in ethnic genocide or displacement? No. People are coming to Europe merely because their countries are poor. And that's most of the world's countries. It is, in effect, a global open border. Now, France will have its own laws on asylum, but the basics across the world, including in the UK, come from the globalist United Nations. It all essentially started with the UN treaty formulated in 1951, the convention relating to the status of refugees, just a few years after the end of World War II. It was originally intended to help European refugees should an atrocity like the Holocaust ever be repeated. But with a protocol in 1967, this was expanded to cover the whole world. What this does is allow people from anywhere to claim asylum in safe countries. Where are the safe countries? The West, and pretty much only the West. It means that people can come from around the world to the West. And that's it, in a nutshell. To claim asylum, a person is supposed to be able to show that they are at risk in their home country as a result of their race or religion or political viewpoint, for example. Each individual is supposed to provide evidence for this. But we know that vast numbers are arriving en masse. Investigating each individual when we don't even know where they're from is impossible. So European governments are just allowing people to stay. If they can get here, they can remain here. Simple. What isn't considered is whether these so-called refugees present a threat or a danger to the native people of Europe. Our governments don't care. Even when it's proven that an individual poses a threat to our safety, European governments let them stay anyway. This point is crucial. In allowing people who they know pose a threat to our safety to stay in our countries regardless, our governments are actively choosing to prioritise the economic well-being of strangers from all over the world over and above our safety. Now take that in for a moment. Your safety means nothing to those who govern you. The brutal murder of this priest is just another example. One of many. Serious crimes have been committed in huge numbers against native Europeans in recent years. These include murder, terror attacks and rape. The 2015 terror attacks in France that killed hundreds, including at Bataclan and Charlie Hebdo, were committed by Muslim extremists, including refugees. Following these attacks, the French government did nothing to reduce the flow of migrants coming through its borders. The Berlin Christmas market attack in 2016 was committed by another Muslim who came to Europe pretending to be a minor seeking refuge. He was in fact a criminal fleeing prosecution in his home country of Tunisia. Also in Germany, the Cologne attacks in which hundreds of women were sexually assaulted in one evening, attacks that German authorities initially intended to cover up, was also carried out by so-called refugees. Again, 
nothing was done to reduce the numbers entering Germany. Here in the UK, the Manchester Arena bombing of 2017 was committed by the son of refugees. One of the London Bridge attackers was a failed asylum seeker. The list goes on and on and on. But at no point do our governments consider closing our borders or even deporting suspected criminals. We are like lambs to the slaughter. And now in 2021, the numbers just keep rising. Every day, more and more people arrive illegally from all over the world, and we're told to have a heart. These people need help. They're in danger. No, we are in danger. And our leaders could not care less. And it isn't just violent attacks on individuals. The assault on our culture is creating enormous conflict for future generations to deal with. Back in France, thousands of churches have been destroyed in the last few years, but the French government is silent. Similar has happened in London. Anti-Semitic attacks are so high that Jews are leaving Europe in vast numbers. Our society is changing before our eyes, and our governments not only don't prevent it, but actively encourage it. Now, it's up to us to see this for what it is. This influx of so-called refugees and asylum seekers has nothing to do with compassion. There is no compassion for the Europeans who are murdered or raped. This is just another branch of the Great Reset, alongside coronavirus and climate change. It's an attempt to transform our world. To do so, the West must come crashing down. And mass immigration is fundamental to this aim. Do not fall for these lies any longer. Recognise that your government is a direct and present danger to you. Recognise that fact and vote them out of office. Vote for your children's future. Vote for the truth. Vote for genuine democratic representation. Vote for Britain. Thank you for watching. If you would like to stay updated with all of our latest videos, please like the video below and subscribe to our channel. As you probably know, For Britain is shadow banned on most social media, so it's really important to like and share our videos in order to get our message out. Thanks again for helping us to fight back. Thanks again for helping us to bring back Britain.